What's up, guys? All right, so we are back in our awesome project of Doom, and what we're going to do is today is work on two things. One, making our own custom function, which will be cool, um, and then also learning about dot syntax. You, just a couple of you guys had some questions about why the rotation of your guy was working really weird, because um, instead of like turning like this, if you turn too much and then push forward, he would go like sideways. The problem with that can easily be remedied, I found out, um, by doing vector 3 dot forward instead of transform dot forward. So just change all of these to vector 3. What I suspect is the way translate works. Um, it's it's because it's doing so I don't know. I think it's using the transforms rotation as kind of a reference point. Um, so when you use vector 3 dot forward it actually pushes you forward rather than sideways in some cases. So change it like that and see if it helps you. Um, but let's get into writing some custom functions. So a function, as you can see here, like function update, it's just a block of code that does something cool. So update will run whatever is in its block um, of you know the brackets. It'll run that every frame. It updates it essentially every frame. So if you have a number in here you're trying to keep track of, like game time or something like that, uh, it'll update that every frame so you can get a kind of real-time uh, update, I guess, a real-time status of that variable or whatever. Or in this case, it's going to check every frame if we're pushing forward or backward or right or left and do the following. So that's great. Um, we don't have to worry about making a function that does that. But let's say we have you know, a guy who we want him to turn red when he, I don't know, touches the ground or when you push forward or if it gets damaged you want him to change to a different color. We'll say function change color. So you just type in function the name of your custom function. Then you give it a parameter uh, which is kind of like uh, right here. Just get button forward. It's kind of just a, a set of data that you can use in the function and then you close brackets. And in the brackets we're going to say well actually let's say for our parameter we want to change the guy's color so we will say new color and colon what kind of a data type is it or it's a color so this new variable you don't have to put var in front of it you can just say new color it's a color and, and I'll show you how that works later. So now we're going to use dot syntax which uh, to make this happen. So transform dot renderer dot shared renderer, oh, not render, dot shared material dot color equals new color. So what this is doing is it's going, if we go back into Unity and we click on our dude, we're accessing his transform, which is essentially like his designation. Then underneath his transform, we're accessing his renderer right here. And underneath renderer, we're accessing his material <clears throat> or a shared material. Same sort of thing. And then under his material, we're accessing the color. Now, if you create a, a, rend a material over here, you'll see that color is a uh, like a variable within material. So if you look at it that way, it's kind of like you're going down a folder hierarchy or a even this kind of hierarchy like player dot main camera dot muzzle or transform dot renderer dot material dot color so that's dot syntax and that's how you can access um, the different components of of your game objects so if, like for instance here you have transform you're accessing um, a function actually like change color called translate and you're giving that translate a parameter, like down here, of this direction and time and velocity and stuff like that. Or here you're accessing the rigid body component of, the tr of your transform, and then you're accessing the add force function of your rigid body, and this is the parameter you're giving it. So that's what we're doing here. Um, 
So great, great, you have your function, but this isn't gonna run unless you call it. So we're going to call it, let's say just by pressing C. Um, up here we've been using input.get button, and that means we have to set up the in inputs within the input manager. But if you're just trying to do a quick prototype, I have often kind of make things easier on myself by using get key. So get key down, key code dot C, so capital, whatever letter on the keyboard you want to use, uh, close brackets, and that'll kind of do the same thing as input uh, get button. What's cool about input dot, like the input dot get button is you can customize these and the player can actually customize these um, when they load up the game. So that allows them a little bit more customizability. Customization, yeah, okay. So right here we're going to call our new function, change color. And what color do we want to change to? Let's change it to red. So color accessing what part of color? Well, they have a shortcut that just makes it red if you type in dot red or dot blue or dot. Actually, if you have mono develop, you can see all of these different colors it can go to. So that's pretty cool. Oops, so color dot red, save it. Let's see what happens. All right. So see, boom, turns red. That's pretty cool. And so do everything else. And you know why? It's because I put shared material, right? So if I shoot bad, those little guys, they're all red because they're all sharing uh, the same default diffuse material. So that's probably not the best idea. So let's see if we can get another type. Instead of shared material, let's just type in material and see if that helps. Just change our dude. Oh, and he's already blue or red, so let's change him to a different color. Change it to blue. Press play. Yay! Now if we shoot, does it... Yep, now they're still red. So that's cool. Um, so that's fun to kind of make different color things, you know, damage indication or, or what have you. But let's also show you how to do some, uh, I don't know, I guess isolated variables. So I'm going to say variable color, awesome color, of course of doom, and it's going to be a color. So this awesome color of doom, we're going to replace this parameter here. And this cannot be called, like you can't call this or reference it um, anywhere else in here because it's in these brackets of of the input .get and C. So this variable will only exist when you press C. It'll like instantiate itself, it'll create an instance of itself, pick its color, send it there, and then it'll go away as soon as you stop pressing C. So if you wanted to expose this, you could bring it out here, say var, awesome color, color, and, oops, gotta put those things in there. And then you, you know, you close it off here, and then you'd see it'll pop up in your guy's thing right here. So that's cool. But let's say we had it to where it was before and you saved it, it would not appear here because it only exists when you press C. So now we have awesome color doom. We're going to say awesome color of doom is equal to color. And we're going to say time dot delta time. I want to see if this works. It might not, but it's worth the shot. So what this is going to do is, I think, count up so the colors could start to change over time. And then, so when we press C, it's going to create a new color. It's going to set that color to some random thing. So this is RGB, so red of some value, green of some value, and blue of some value. Then it's going to call this function, our custom function, 
giving it the parameter of this new awesome color of Doom that we created. And that's going to pass over into here, which is then going to be used here. So if that makes sense. So created a color, set the color, <clears throat> called the function using that color. In calling this function, we use the awesome color as this new color variable, which is used in this line to set the material that color. So let's see if that works. I don't know if it will. And let's do this. So see, oh, he's black now. Black as night. <laughs> All right, failed experiment. <laughs> but we learned a valuable lesson, which is don't mess with code ever again. We'll make it cyan. Uh-huh. So now he's red. I'm gonna create some bad guys first. I don't know why they're bad guys if I'm shooting them, but they are. And now, yay! Cool. So that's how you do three things. That's how you go, um, you change colors, that's how you use dot syntax, and that's how you make a custom function. Now let's use some audio up in this bizzle. So function, play, actually we, we don't, have to create a new function for that because we already have, um, or Unity has already set that up. So instead, we're going to create a new variable. So you can create a thing where every time you press the fire button, it creates, um, it plays a sound. But instead, what we're going to do is we actually don't need a new script either. We're going to go to our bullet bullet prefab. We're going to give it a audio source and give it an audio clip, which I don't have one, so let's import a crazy one. Um, dot wave. <clears throat> See if I have any dot waves. I'll do goodbye. Wait, where did you go? Hi. Um, right, wow, I have a lot of sounds. I don't know where these are coming from. Gong sound, that sounds cool. So we're going to import that. It's a 3D sound. That's fine by me. So now we're going to go back to our audio source, add gong sound. And we're going to have it play on awake, and it's not going to loop. So what it's going to do is it's going to play every time one of these bullets is created because it plays on awake. So every time a bullet comes into the... Oh, see, there you go. Hear that? It's kind of weird because that gong sound has a bit of a uh, delay at the beginning. So let's do a new one. Let's do dot wave. And we're going to do uh, um, ricochet. Sure. Bullet. Ricochet. Boom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's cool, and we're changed colors. Great, so that works as well. But let's say we want a different sound to play whenever we press the change color button. We'll just say, well first we'll create a new variable. So variable color sound, whatever. And we're gonna make it an audio clip. Then we're gonna say audio which will access our audio source dot play one shot, which is a function of audio that Unity has already set up. Parentheses, and it's asking for an audio clip, so we're gonna say color sound. And that should work. So it'll play that sound when we press C. So let's go back into Unity and go to our player. Let's change this color sound to gong sound. And if all goes according to plan, oh, first we gotta add an audio. Actually, let's see if we can do it without audio source. Probably not. Yeah, there's no audio source attached to the player. So obviously you can't play a sound if there's no source for it to come from. So we're gonna add audio source component. You don't have to change anything here. Um, 
just needs to know it can make sounds. Yeah, here we go. Yay! Beautiful. Beautiful. So, if you want to know how to make uh, cool wave files, you can go to just download uh, Audacity. It's free, and you just record sounds. Or you can go to I think it's freesound.org. A lot of cool f sounds on there. Now, one more thing before we go. Let's make it so those bullets disappear. Because you don't want to have bullets that just exist in the world forever. Because then it's going to start slowing down your game. So we're going to say kill object. And we're going to add that to our bullet prefab. And then we're going to go in. And we don't want to... So on start, we'll say this. Variable kill timer to float and on update so every frame kill timer actually wait I don't think we'll just do the kill timer thing I think it already has a function built in but we'll say kill timer minus time dot delta time which is essentially like counting down in seconds so it's going to count down our kill timer and when kill timer is less than 0, 0.0, we are going to game object, access our game object, and we will destroy. Hmm. Game object dot destroy game object. There we go. And we're gonna destroy it. Oh, here we go. Time is float a second later. Let's see if this works together. So our bullets going to exist for three seconds. And then a second later, it'll die. So that'll be four seconds, I guess. So watch. One, two, three, and four. And that's nice because if you see over here, it's oh my gosh, we have so many things on the screen and in the world, and it's getting all slow. But ah, uh, deletes them all. That's beautiful. Cool. So that's how you do that. I hope that helped. Um, let me know in the comments or send me a message. Let me know what you guys want to learn next. Uh, but yeah, I hope this helps you guys out. If not, let me know. Anyways, good luck.